here is our active load transistor uh, amplifier. And so you see we have a P-type transistor on the top and an N-type transistor on the bottom. And we have these two gate voltages sitting here. Now because these have to have the same current, what ends up happening is, is if this voltage tries to change, it's going to be linked to this transistor and so we get the competition between the two transistors. In order to analyze this, let's look at the transistors one at a time. So let's start with our N-type transistor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our N-type transistor and what we're going to do is we're going to fix its voltage. We're fixing its drain voltage, which is my V out for a given bias voltage. So let's go and look at what this looks like. So here it is. So we are changing the drain voltage. So we're basically putting in a voltage pulse and sweeping that for a given gate voltage. So if I run that, so I ran that and I want to look at this current. So I put in a little resistor just to make sure that my current's going down. And then this changed this voltage to, we just labeled it as D. So this is my drain voltage. So V of D. So what we see here is that as this part here is nice and linear, so it changes with my drain voltage. So this is active and this down here is triode. So we're interested in this and the slope of this line is the lambda. So this one has a lambda of 0.2. So if I write down what that equation is, you see this is where my ID is and I say ID is equal to 1 half KP1 VGS minus V threshold squared times 1 plus lambda VDS. Well, okay, so our source is ground, so we'll just do that as VG, which is VB1. Now my drain to source, since my source is zero, this becomes V out. So what we see, like we saw in LT spice, is if this is VDS, you see my line goes like that. You see, and then this part here kind of swooped up, and this is my ID. So what we see here is this is my base voltage, is my this bias voltage here, is my gate voltage, which is going to cause my plot to to just move up and down. Okay, so now let's look at my other case. So now we move down here and I want to look at my p-type transistor and we're going to do the same thing and this is going to be my V out and then I'm going to have a VB2 and this is my 1.8 so now let's go down and look at that so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this line here and we will, oh. and we're going to connect my p-type transistor to it right here. Okay. So now we're just looking at our p-type transistor. So here is some gate voltage. Here is the drain voltage. We're going to plot this. And so now you see everything is backwards. So this part over here is where I'm close to cut off and my current goes to zero. And then as this voltage gets smaller and smaller and smaller, sorry, we're looking at this drain voltage. So right here, when my drain voltage is 1.8 volts and this point is 1.8 volts, that's where I'm in triode because these two voltages are really close together. As this voltage gets smaller, you see then I'm going into active. And then once I'm in active, I got this nice linear plot that goes this direction. So now this is where I fix these voltages. So now with the p-type, my plot's going this direction. With my n-type, my plot's going that direction. So when I come in here and I fix these two together, then this one's kind of sloping up that way, this one's sloping up that way. And so if I run those two, 
now you see that one sloping this way and one sloping that way, wherever they cross, that's going to be the voltage and the current that the combination creates. And so this is going to be the solution of mine. So this is the red is my N type, the blue is my P type, and this is the solution. So you see this is going to have this voltage and this current. Well, if I wanted a higher current, then if I start changing my base voltage, let's start with this bottom one. So this one was 0.7. So if I increase this voltage, that's going to take this red one and shift it up. So let's come in here and go 0 0.72. And so now the red one shifted up. Now, if it shifts up a lot, so if I go all the way up to 0 0.75, let's say, you see this is shifted up and we're looking at the solution of the two. So the solution of the two is going to be down here, where the blue one, which is my p-type, is going to be an active, and my red one, which is my n-type, is going to be in trial because it's below this because I shifted too far. So depending on which way I want to shift my voltages and currents, I'm going to shift these two gate voltages up and down to get it to be at the point where I want it to be. And i got to be careful that if I shift too far, I'm going to throw one out of active. So now in this case, I want to shift it back here to 0.9, and I want to have a current up here, let's say. So then I need to take this one and shift it up. So let's say that I wanted a one milliamp. Well then, here's my one milliamp up here. I'm gonna to have to shift both of them up until I get it about in the middle. So then I'm gonna start changing that gate voltage. And so I need this gate voltage to get bigger and bigger. Now let's go back to where I was. So now we say, oh, I wanna get this back to 0.9. So I wanna shift my blue one. Well, I would come in here and let's say like we did before, I change this to seven. 0.75 and watch it what happens well it was kind of hard to tell but now it's shifting down rather than up because it's comparing this voltage the gate voltage to my source voltage so if this voltage gets bigger then my gate to source voltage gets the magnitude gets smaller so if I want the current to go up I want this voltage to go down so if I go 0.65 you see that starts shifting it up because it's a p-type and so we're trying to get farther away from my source which is the higher voltage so you can see that we keep moving this one down and that voltage goes up right and so then now i'm in this point and in this point they're both in active so if i want about this point nine and i want to come over here and look at that so if i want to get close it gets hard to shift these because they go in and out of triode so I would kind of come down here, let's move this over and write down. So now let's look at what this equation is. So this equation is ID is one half KP2 times VGS minus VTO squared one plus lambda VDS. So you see I use the exact same equation because I'm really doing magnitudes of these. because I know that it needs to be up and down, so I don't have to worry about that so that everything works out the same. But now we're gonna to have to go look at how all these work out. So one half Kp2, now the magnitude of my VGS is gonna be 1.8 minus Vd2, minus my threshold, which is 0.5 squared, one plus lambda, now what is my VDS? So my VDS is going to be 1.8 minus V out. So then there is my equation where I had to kind of swap in what my VGS is and what my V out is on these two. Okay, so let's say we want to get close. So let's look up here and let's say that we wanted a ID equal to one milliamp and we want a V out equal to 0 0.9 volts. So then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go 10 to the minus 3 equals 1 half Kp. Well, let's go look and see what we had for our Kp.
So my N MOS had a KP of 10 milli. So we're going to go 10 to the minus 2, and then I'm going to go VB1 minus 0 0.5 squared times 1 plus my lambda was 0.2, and I want this to be 0.9. And so then you can see I can solve this for the approximate value of VB1 that gets me where I want to do. So let's solve that. So I took that equation and typed it in here and then hit solve. And so this is a square, so we get two solutions. And we're going to choose the one that is larger than my um, that's larger than my threshold voltage. So I'm going to get 0.911. And that's going to give me about that. So let's go over here and see what that looks like. So let's plug in 0.911. And so that's this one here. So you see we are wanted a current of about 1. So you see it's right here in this active regime right here. Okay, And then we could do the same thing for the other one. But here's this plot. So this one's really low. So I have to shift it up until these go through at the same time. Now if I look at this right here, if I want to look at right now, I'm fixing the voltage right here. And so this one is the current, whoops. And so when these two points right here are equal, then it's at zero current. So if I try to take these two, if I design these two at these two points and I connect them together, they're going to have current going through that. So when I break this off, they're not going to be at the same voltage. Then that voltage is going to move down to this point here. So I want to keep moving that until I get this to work. So we want to take this one and start moving it up. So we're going to move this voltage down. So you see here's 0.4. You see it's starting to move up. 0.2. Starting to move up. Well, what happens if I go all the way to zero? And so even at zero, I'm not quite where I need to be. So what does that mean? So what that means is that my KP wasn't high enough for this solution. So I'm going to need a larger KP. So this solution, the biggest I can get is down here. I would have to work this at a smaller current to get it to work. But you can kind of see these trade-offs between the gate voltage, the VDS, and the 